He's 1,200 pounds of internalized self-loathing, and at best, he's a chaotic, increasingly destructive force in Hollywoo. Formerly Hollywood, now Hollywoob. He's Bojack. Horseman. Obviously. And no need to check what time it is right now.com, because it's time to talk timelines. I'm Jacob with Channel Frederator, and this is the complete Bojack Horseman timeline. And massive spoilers for the entire series up ahead. Obviously. Well, whatever. Let's make like esteemed character actress Margot Martindale and get into it. A Dark Family History, 1938 to 1963. Not to sound too much like Diane, but in order to understand what makes Bojack Bojack and what makes Bojack Horseman the show a lot better than horsing around, sorry Herb, you have to understand Bojack's family history, most of which plays out like a true American gothic. Bojack's bitter, perpetually disappointed mother Beatrice is born into the Sugarman Sugar Cube Company family fortune in 1938, just before World War II begins. Six years later, the Sugarman family, Joseph, Honey, Cracker Jack, and Beatrice poses for the portrait that haunts Bojack throughout the series, marking the last time the Sugarmans have anything resembling a normal family dynamic. A few months later, Cracker Jack is shot in the head while serving in World War II, sending the Sugarman family into a downward spiral that fractures all of their lives. Shortly after her son's untimely death, Honey Sugarman is lobotomized by Joseph, who then berates her for letting Beatrice get scarlet fever. Around the same same time, Cutie Cutie Cupcake, Princess Carolyn's emotionally abusive alcoholic mom, is born in Eden, North Carolina. Beatrice grows up with a dead-eyed mother and a greedy, repressive father. She graduates from Barnard around 1960. She returns with a head full of ideas about the civil rights movement instead of returning with a husband like her father had planned. Also around this time, Herb Kazaz is born, but he won't come into play until later. In 1963, Beatrice, at 25, meets the scruffy, working-class butterscotch horseman after he sneaks into her dumb debutante party. They click and he lures her away from the party. After they fool around in his car on a cliff overlooking the city, Beatrice gets pregnant with Bojack and has to track down Butterscotch. He suggests that she gets an abortion, but when she refuses, he asks her to marry him and whisks her away on what seems to be their only romantic adventure together. An impromptu move across the country to San Francisco to start their life anew, which, well, doesn't really change much about their circumstances, unfortunately. A Rough Upbringing, 1964 to 1974. Bojack is born on January 2nd, 1964 in San Francisco, and true to form, Mr. Peanut Butter comes into the world just a few years later. Bojack's parents fight nearly constantly when he's growing up, over big things like their class difference and over little things like who has to get up to take care of Bojack in the middle of the night. Their respective dreams are shattered because of Bojack, which is something that they often tell him. You ruined me, Bojack. I know. Around the time that Bojack is six years old, Beatrice convinces Butterscotch to quit his labor-intensive job at the fish cannery for a cushy white-collar gig at her father's factory, something Butterscotch deeply resents her for for the rest of their lives together. Shortly after, Secretariat becomes a famous athlete for his racing prowess, and Bojack starts to see him as someone to look up to, a more preferable father figure than Butterscotch. In 1972, Secretariat endorses Nixon and also makes a deal to dodge the draft and send his brother Jeff Retariat instead. Then the next year, he wins the Kentucky Derby the Preakness, and the Belmont Stakes, winning the Triple Crown and becoming the fastest horse in history. At nine, an emotional Bojack writes a letter to Secretariat that ends up being televised on the Dick Cavett show that asks, how do you not be sad? Which pretty much sets the pace for how relentlessly depressing this show can be. Secretariat gives the advice to keep running forward no matter what. There are people in your life who are going to try to hold you back, slow you down, but you don't let them. Don't you stop running and don't you ever look behind you. There's nothing for you behind you. All that exists is what's ahead. Unfortunately, Bojack isn't able to hear it over his parents fighting. One month later, Secretariat ends up being banned from racing for gambling on his own races. This, coupled with the news that his brother had been killed in Vietnam, causes Secretariat to commit suicide by jumping off the George Rogers Clark Memorial Bridge in Louisville. Two years later, in 1974, Princess Carolyn is born. Bojack's Big Break, 1980 to 1996. Diane Wynn is born in 1980, and sometime in the early to mid 80s, Bojack leaves San Francisco for LA. Sarah Lynn's born in 84, and around that time, Bojack starts doing stand up comedy. He meets Herb and Charlotte Moore, who are then dating in the stand up scene, and when they break up, because Herb is gay, as we'll later find out, Charlotte moves to Maine, and Herb makes an impression on ABC execs and sells his show, Horsin' Around. He takes Bojack to Griffith Park to tell him the news that Bojack is set to be the lead of the show, gives him a telescope, 
and kisses him, but the two wave it off as a product of the moment and nothing more. As for Horsin' Around, the first episode airs in 1987 and immediately becomes a huge hit. Herb and Bojack skip the rap party to get tanked in a tank, but their conversation about how the future is bright belies the future of their own relationship. Soon Bojack begins drinking on set with Sharona, his hairdresser. Sometime during the next year, Beatrice Horseman comes to a live taping of the show only to tell Bojack how disappointed she was in his performance. Well, it wasn't Ibsen. That's your takeaway? That your son's TV show wasn't Ibsen? Despite her opinion, the show runs for nine seasons, even spawning a hit single called Do the Bojack. The show's success also inspires an unrelated knockoff show in the 1990s starring Mr. Peanut Butter called Mr. Peanut Butter's House, also a huge success in its own right, fanning the flames of rivalry. In Bojack's mind, at least, Mr. Peanut Butter's always been under the impression that they're best friends. What is this, a crossover episode? You know, that gets funnier every time. Todd Chavez and Pickles are born in the early 90s, and Princess Carolyn moves to LA after her first miscarriage to become an assistant to Bojack's agent Marvin Vigor. In 1993, Bojack is up to play his hero Secretariat, but the film falls apart during production, something that he'll later dwell on. Later that year, Herb is caught hooking up with an otter in the park, which becomes a scandal. Herb comes out to Bojack at work the next day and begs him for solidarity. He asks Bojack to say he'll walk off the show if Herb is fired because of his sexuality. Bojack tells Herb that he'll have his back, but then Bojack talks with stony ABC exec Angela Diaz and goes back on his word. Herb can't work again in the film industry, but instead starts a charity to bring water to children in sub-Saharan Africa. Horsin' Around ends in 1996. After Horsin' Around, 1996 to 2014. After Horsin' Around ends, Bojack spends the next decade doing... Well, nothing. His grandfather, Joseph Sugarman, dies in 1999, and shortly after that, Butterscotch knocks up his maid Henrietta. Bojack's half-sister, Hollyhock, is born in 2000, the same year that teen pop superstar Sextina Aquafina is born. Around the same time, Bojack's horse and around co-star, Sarah Lynn, on the standard child star path, pivots to making extremely sexual pop music, including the very uncomfortable song Prickly Muffin, the lead single off her debut album, I Am Sarah Lynn. Bojack reluctantly continues to throw his annual Halloween parties, and in 2004, Todd and his childhood friend Emily T.P. Bojack's house. In 2007, Bojack and Princess Carolyn start to date, beginning a long relationship which is hot and cold and generally bad for Princess Carolyn. Meanwhile, Todd is kicked out of his mom's house for playing too much Decapathon. He moves in with Bojack, who thinks he's been kicked out for his alternative lifestyle, and he probably thinks that taking in a presumably gay Todd will help ease his conscience regarding the whole Herb thing. Since Bojack can't land a job, Marv quits and Princess Carolyn takes up his role as an agent, namely as Bojack's agent, which, you know, doesn't complicate the whole relationship thing at all. No, of course not. Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter start dating, and Bojack finally gets a gig, a mockumentary-style show called The Bojack Horseman Show. He asks Sarah Lynn, who's now a pop superstar of Britney-level fame, to be a big guest star on the show with him, but she declines, disappointed that he would only try to reconnect with her for his own advancement, and the show flops pretty quickly after seven episodes, ending most of his prospects until 2014. And Bojack never really feels the need to discuss The Bojack Horseman Show at any point in his life. Memoirs, 2014. Bojack gets a contract with Penguin, the degenerate pinky penguin to be exact, to write a memoir about his life now that 18 years have passed since the end of Horse and Around. But he's having a terrible time getting anything down, so Penguin hires Diane to ghostwrite for Bojack. Bojack seems to really like her until he discovers that she's dating Mr. Peanut Butter. And yeah, sure, he'd already met her as Mr. Peanut Butter's girlfriend at one of his Halloween parties in 2009, but Bojack will be Bojack, and that usually means that Bojack will be blacked out and or will not remember anything that doesn't directly apply to him. During the first few months of working with Diane, Bojack makes a public spectacle of himself when he slights a Navy SEAL over a box of muffins. Bojack also helps Todd develop his rock opera, but when he realizes success will cause Todd to move out, he sabotages the opera with the help of esteemed character actress Margot Martindale. Diane and Bojack grow close during this time period. He helps her deal with the passing of her father, and she watches him selfishly and recklessly use Sarah Lynn, who now has a terrible life-endangering drug problem, to backslide into his old habits. While they're hanging out, Sarah Lynn tells Bojack that Herb is dying of ass cancer, and Bojack decides to reconnect with him to apologize in person for what he did. It does not go well. When Bojack visits him in Malibu, Herb tells him, <coughs> You have to live with the shit thing you did for the rest of your life. You have to know that it's never, ever going to be okay. 
These words will stay with Bojack until the end of the series, and presumably for the rest of his life. Bojack tries to kiss Diane on the way back from Malibu, which starts a pissing contest between Bojack and Mr. Peanut Butter, wherein Bojack buys the restaurant Elefante and then blacks out and then steals the D from the Hollywood sign to impress Diane. Mr. Peanut Butter, in typical fashion, decides to steal Bojack's thunder and gives the D to Diane as though he pulled off the caper himself. It becomes a giant spectacle and she hates it. But Princess Carolyn sees an opportunity and buys the rights to the movie about stealing the D. Vigor merges with FME and Princess Carolyn has to share an office with her nemesis, Vanessa Gecko, who is not a gecko, but a human, it's not confusing at all. Luckily for Princess Carolyn, Gecko doesn't last long after fumbling the Ava Braun movie. Princess Carolyn breaks up with Bojack on her 40th birthday after he acts like a total jerk and instead starts going out with the totally normal Vincent Adultman who likes business transactions, calls Bojack horsey, works at the business factory, and is definitely not just three kids stacked on top of each other in a trench coat. Bojack unsuccessfully attempts to sabotage Mr. Peanut Butter and Diane's wedding, with Margot's help of course, but only ends up rushing it and getting Margot tossed in jail. Here's hoping that she has better luck with the Latin Kings than Todd did after the Boreana's house fiasco. Mr. Peanut Butter and Todd become best friends after Todd works as PB's driver for a brief stint, and soon they start a production company together called PB Livin'. Diane finally finishes Bojack's memoir, One Trick Pony, but Bojack hates how real it is and fires her, attempting to write his own book in a week's time, but failing hard and tripping hard in the process. All that failure and reflecting on all of the things that his life could have been culminates in Bojack's Bojack crashing Diane's ghostwriter panel. He begs her to tell him that it's not too late for him to change and demands affirmation that he's actually a good person. I know that I can be selfish and narcissistic and self-destructive, but underneath all that deep down, I'm a good person and I need you to tell me that I'm good. Diane, tell me, please, Diane, tell me that I'm good. And it's here at season one, episode 11, that you, the viewer, realizes that this show is really something special. In retaliation to Bojack's outburst, Diane leaks the first few chapters to BuzzFeed, and much to Pinky Penguin's relief, the book is a bestseller when it's finally released. It even wins a Golden Globe, which is doubly impressive since it was the award for best comedy or musical, and also the Golden Globes don't give awards to books. In any case, the success of One Trick Pony lands Bojack a reprise of his role as Secretariat in a new production. It's all good for Diane, too. The famous Sebastian St. Clair contacts her about accompanying him on his humanitarian work in Cordovia while she writes his memoir. Second Chances, 2015. Despite everything looking up for him, Bojack is still struggling. Princess Carolyn starts working with Rutabaga at Vim, their own agency. Herb dies, not from cancer, but from a peanut allergy, and at the funeral, Bojack reconnects with Charlotte, who gives him her card. She's living in New Mexico now with a daughter named Penny, but Bojack won't find that out until his horrible, life-changing decision to go and visit her, but... We'll get to that. Bojack starts dating an owl named Wanda, and they truly connect, although Wanda is a little out of it, having been in a coma for the last 30 years. Diane turns 35, and she and Mr. Peanut Butter have a big fight, establishing a pattern that will plague their marriage. Mr. Peanut Butter becomes Princess Carolyn's client after his agent dies doing the funky Spider-Man, and he gets a gig hosting a show created by J.D. Salinger. Hollywood stars and celebrities, what do they know? Do they know things? Let's find out. It's maybe more of a working title. Also, J.D. Salinger is still alive, actually. The show ends after one season. Diane decides to leave for Cordovia and write Sebastian St. Clair's memoir, but to her disappointment, he turns out to not quite be the dashing charitable explorer he purports to be and instead does all of his outreach for good PR. She comes back from Cordovia, but pretends to still be there, staying with Bojack instead of at home with Mr. Peanut Butter. Bojack and Wanda break up. Filming Secretariat's causing a lot of traumatic childhood flashbacks for Bojack, who can an elaborate scheme to break into the Nixon library in the hope that his efforts will convince Lenny Turtletob, the film's producer, not to cut the scene where Secretariat endorses Nixon to dodge the draft. It was cut because it tested poorly with a focus group. He gets Princess Carolyn, Mr. Peanut Butter, Margot Martindale, who's just been released from jail, and director Kelsey Jennings involved, but the heist is unsuccessful and results in Kelsey being fired from the movie and replaced by Abe to Catfish. After the leadership change and a difficult work relationship, Bojack leaves LA to go visit Charlotte in New Mexico. He's there for roughly two months until the night he decides to be Charlotte's daughter Penny's prom date, and then things go from yikes to extreme yikes when he nearly sleeps with her. Charlotte naturally tells him to leave and not come back, but in stronger terms than I can quote here on YouTube. And if you ever try to contact me or my family again, I will kill you. 
He skips town back to LA and tells no one about what happened. Meanwhile, Todd starts doing improv, which leads him to take a trip on the Giggle Ship, where he discovers that the leader of the improv group is a fraud. The improv leader traps Todd on the Giggle Ship, and Bojack leads a raid to free his friend. While Bojack's out of town, Diane continues to live in his house while she's working for Sextina Aquafina, ghostwriting her tweets. When Mr. Peanut Butter spots Diane at a bar and not in Cordovia, he calls Diane telling her that he needs help changing batteries and he would really appreciate it if she could come home. She moves back in with him but never tells Mr. Peanut Butter where she really was. Princess Carolyn parts ways with Rutabaga and the preliminary screenings of Secretariat go so well that Bojack gets a meeting with Anna Spanakopita, a publicist known for getting her clients Oscars. The Big Comeback, 2016. Bojack begins his Oscar campaign under Anna and Princess Carolyn hires a new assistant, Judah, to help her keep track of Bojack's new work along with the rest of her clients. Bojack lands an interview with Manatee Fair that subsequently lands him in the bedroom with his interviewer, but the encounter reminds him too much of New Mexico. In a moment of weakness, he blurts out some of the details of the trip, but this won't come into play for a little bit. Secretariat turns out to be a huge box office hit, and Bojack unsuccessfully tries to apologize to Kelsey Jannings for getting her fired. Out of a job and without much else to do, Mr. Peanut Butter decides to buy out a spaghetti strainer warehouse. He and Diane are continually fighting, mostly because of tension between Diane and Bojack, and they're regularly going to couples therapy. Todd and Emily begin their plans to launch Cabra Cadabra, their ride-sharing service, but these are derailed after Bojack sleeps with Emily and she leaves the company. Diane is making a mess of this whole tweeting for Sextina Aquafina situation, partially because of her brief experimentation with the party drug Gush. After Diane finds out she's pregnant and decides to get an abortion, she accidentally tweets from the pop star's account, I'm getting an abortion. Though this at first seems like a fireable offense, Diane, Sextina, and Princess Carolyn manage to spin the situation to their advantage. Sextina Aquafina has a fake abortion live on television and releases a tactless but catchy pro-choice pop song called Get That Fetus, Kill That Fetus. To their surprise, it's a huge hit and the whole debacle catapults the pop star to even higher levels of fame until Sextina actually does get pregnant and decides to keep it. Princess Carolyn goes on a series of dates arranged by Judah and in the process meets Ralph Stilton, a kind and funny mouse. They start dating happily. Bojack is getting acting parts left and right and Sarah Lynn contacts him about Ethan Around, a spin-off of Horse and Around that focuses on one of the horse's kids, Ethan, raising daughters of his own with help from the horse. Anna refuses on Bojack's behalf and later his other acting gigs, Flight of the Pegasus and an indie movie with Kelsey Jannings fall through as well. Judah with Charlie Witherspoon enters talks of a merger of Vim and Vigor behind Princess Carolyn's back and later she and Bojack have a massive fight after after Bojack fires her as his agent at Elefante at Anna's insistence. Princess Carolyn fires Diane, but eventually recommends her to Ralph's sister, Stephanie, who owns a women's interest site called Girl Cruise. Bojack is nominated for an Oscar, but it turns out to be a fraudulent nomination. After learning this and an impassioned speech by Todd claiming, you are all of the things that are wrong with you, Bojack calls up Sarah Lynn, who has made it through nine months of sobriety the day he calls, and together they go on a bender that lasts well over a month. Nonetheless, Sarah Lynn wins an Oscar for Best Original Song, and then she and Bojack go to the planetarium, where she dies of a drug overdose. After calling an ambulance and claiming he discovered her body, Bojack reluctantly tries to make himself feel better about the whole situation by starting over on Ethan Around, but he walks off set, not wanting to fall into the same trappings he did on Horse and Around. Bojack then disappears for over a year without telling anyone where he went. Hollyhock, 2017 to 2018. In Hollywood, life proceeds as normal without Bojack Around. The only person trying to reach him is Diane. Mr. Peanut Butter is running for governor of California against Woodchuck Kudchuck Berkowitz, and after a load of hijinks, including a ski race won by Todd followed by a super brief tenure as governor, an election is held anyway and Kudchuk Berkowitz maintains the seat. Princess Carolyn opens up to Ralph about her miscarriage and the two move in together. They decide to try to have a baby. Todd starts dating Courtney Portnoy for publicity but eventually calls off their wedding. Back in Bojack's world, turns out he ran off to the old Sugarman place in Michigan where he lives under the alias Hambone Fake Namington for eight months with only a fly named Eddie for company. After he finishes restoring the house and re living all of his grim family memories, Bojack hops in his Tesla and drives back to LA. In the meantime, Hollyhock has attempted to contact Princess Carolyn without success and chloroforms Todd in an effort to find Bojack. When Bojack does turn up, they find him sleeping and steal a hair from his head. Todd takes it to get tested against Hollyhock's hair for a DNA match. When it comes back positive, Bojack assumes he's her father from one of his many hazy memories. Bojack takes Hollyhock to go see Beatrice in the nursing home where Beatrice has developed some dramatic symptoms of dementia, hardly recognized Bojack in person. After an altercation brought on by Bojack, obviously, the nursing home tells Bojack that not only can they no longer care for Beatrice,
Beatrice, but she probably doesn't have much time left and should be with her family. When Bojack finally speaks to Diane, she's naturally angry with him for not answering any of her calls. Princess Carolyn takes a pregnancy test, and it turns out to be positive. She tells the newly displaced Todd that he can take her old Tabby Woods apartment since Hollyhock and Beatrice are living at Bojack's now. Princess Carolyn's heirloom necklace is broken, and when she takes it to be fixed, the jeweler tells her that it's fake. That same day, she finds out that she miscarried for the fifth time. She shares as much with Ralph, and they have a tearful breakup. Courtney Portnoy fires Princess Carolyn, and Princess Carolyn fires Judah for not consulting her on the merger, despite his decision to ultimately decline an offer from Charlie Witherspoon. She channels her feelings into a new deal with Flip McVicker about a TV show named Philbert, then brokers a deal with Lenny Turtletob, forging Bojack's signature on the contracts to make sure the WhatTimeIsItRightNow.com execs buy in. WhatTimeIsItRightNow.com being the online platform that would carry Philbert. Gilbert. Todd comes out as asexual and starts dating Yolanda, another asexual person, but things don't work out in the end. Hollyhock starts inadvertently taking drugs that Beatrice is feeding to her, and when it comes out that his mother was drugging her, Bojack puts Beatrice back in a home, and Hollyhock returns to live with her eight gay dads. Beatrice will soon pass away due to apparent complications from her ever-worsening dementia. Bojack tracks down Hollyhock's birth records and discovers that they're siblings, not father and daughter, as they both thought. As they reevaluate their relationship, principal photography begins begins on Filbert. Filbert. 2018. Tensions mount on the set of Filbert, as Bojack thinks the character is poorly written, leading to disputes with Flip. Nevertheless, Bojack also begins a relationship with his co-star, Gina. Things are relatively happy for him for a while. He and Hollyhock are staying in touch long distance since she enrolled at Wesleyan University. It's a time full of big changes. Princess Carolyn decides to pursue motherhood on her own and looks into adopting. Todd becomes the CEO of WhatTimeIsItRightNow.com. Diane moves out of the house she lived in with Mr. Peanut Butter since they're getting a divorce. Mr. Peanut Butter meets a much younger dog named pickles and they start dating, while Diane goes to Vietnam on a soul-searching expedition. And Mr. Peanut Butter joins the cast of Filbert as a PR move and becomes Bojack's fictional sidekick. When Diane returns, she learns of the Manatee Fair interview about what happened in New Mexico and is unsettled and angry at Bojack, so she gets a job with the writer of Filbert so that she can sabotage him, even going so far as to suggest dangerous stunts Bojack can do himself. He ends up hurting himself pretty badly in one case. Bojack starts going to therapy, only his therapist is the same person that Diane's sees which causes problems. Diane writes Bojack's confession about New Mexico verbatim into a Filbert script, and he realizes that she knows. The first season of Filbert ends to much critical acclaim. Bojack has prescribed painkillers for his injury, but when Hollyhock comes to visit, she panics and dumps them all down the drain. Bojack spirals deeper into addiction and loses his grip on reality while filming season two of Filbert, and he chokes out Gina on set, causing a huge PR disaster for Princess Carolyn and the show. Gina and Bojack obviously break up, and the show is canceled, but not for the reason you'd think. It was actually one of Todd's shenanigans which turned into a huge harassment fiasco causing the company to fold. With Filbert in the can and Bojack still hurting, Diane drives him to rehab. Rehab and rock bottom. 2019. Bojack checks into Pastiche's rehab and starts working with Dr. Champ on overcoming his substance abuse issues. In doing so, he grapples with memories of Sarah Lynn's overdose and how he handled that situation. In happier news, Princess Carolyn has finalized an adoption and is now a new mother, but it's a lot harder than she expected and she refers to the baby as Untitled Princess Carolyn Project as she attempts to juggle work and home life. Diane is sent on a girl crush assignment with a cameraman named Guy who she quickly develops feelings for, even though she's not happy that her employer wants her to sugarcoat stories stories, especially stories pertaining to their investors. Todd attempts to arrange a surprise wedding for Mr. Peanut Butter and Pickles, but when Mr. Peanut Butter tells Pickles that he cheated on her with Diane, twice, the wedding gets called off. The two then develop this incredibly convoluted plan for Pickles to get back at Mr. Peanut Butter, but in, in the end, uh, Pickles leaves him. Uh, oh, excuse me, I'm receiving a text message, and it appears we have broken up forever. Dr. Champ urges Bojack to leave rehab, but when Bojack suspects that it's just to make room for the next hot celebrity, he pushes back, and Dr. Champ accidentally drinks Bojack's secret stash of vodka and goes completely off the rails. Bojack does his best to help him, but ultimately Dr. Champ loses his license and ends up spilling dirt on Sarah Lynn's death to Paige Sinclair and Maximilian Banks, two reporters hot on Bojack's heels. Todd reconnects with his estranged mom over a donated kidney and meets a girl named Maude who he hits it off with. Princess Carolyn, in dire need of help balancing her life, rehires 
Judah in the most satisfying return of the season. Diane moves to Chicago to live with Guy permanently, where she starts taking antidepressants and works on finishing her book, but it ends up morphing into a different project entirely, becoming a fun YA series about a mall detective instead of a hard-hitting collection of essays. Mr. Peanut Butter stars in a new television show called Birthday Dad to much acclaim, and Bojack, constantly looking for a change, stops dyeing his hair and starts teaching acting at Wesleyan, which initially bugs Hollyhock, but they talk it out and set some boundaries. As it turns out, Bojack is a really good teacher, but forces behind the scenes are brewing. Paige Sinclair is eager to get the scoop, and she and Maximilian drop in on Penny in New Mexico, where they press her for the real story. They get the rest of the truth out of Mr. Peanut Butter, and the Sarah Lynn story breaks, ruining any semblance of normalcy Bojack had created for himself. Bojack does a live interview with Biscuits Braxby, where he manages to tell most of the truth and comes out looking like a repentant victim of addiction. He feels so pumped up about the interview and all of the attention that he agrees to come in for a second night of extended interviewing, but thanks to a tip from Paige Sinclair, the tables turn on him. Biscuits Braxby highlights Bojack's tendency to take advantage of the women in his life, and focuses specifically on the 17 minutes that pass between Sarah Lynn's overdose and the time of Bojack's call to the ambulance. He comes out of the interview universally reviled. Hollyhock cuts him out of her life, and his house is sold without his permission. Bojack attempts to embrace his new image by working with Vance Wagner on a movie called The Horny Unicorn, but he just gets sadder and sadder and eventually falls back into drinking. Angela Diaz contacts Bojack, saying that they want to buy him out of Horse and Around so that they can just cut him out of the show the way they did with Cosby and the Cosby Show, now just called The Show. He breaks into his old home and drinks a bottle of vodka, gulps a handful of pills, then blacks out and calls Diane before falling into the pool, leaving her an incredibly distressing voicemail. He has vivid visions of the view from halfway down, where he's forced to reconcile with Sarah Lynn, Cracker Jack, Secretariat, his mother, and her before a terrifying black mass chases him through the house and swallows him whole. Bojack wakes up in a hospital bed, where he's been arrested for breaking and entering, but really he thinks it's just kinda for everything. He's sentenced to 14 months in Supermax, but he's able to get out for the weekend to celebrate Princess Carolyn's marriage to her assistant Judah. Mr. Peanut Butter picks him up from the prison. As Bojack looks around the reception and has a pretty heartfelt exchange with everyone his life has affected, for better or worse, more so for the worse, he finally speaks with Diane on the roof, where she airs her grievances and recounts the voicemail that he left her. To help ease the tension, he jokes about how funny it would be if this was the last time he and Diane ever spoke, and he's met with nothing but a pregnant pause. Sometimes life's a bitch and then you die, Bojack says. Diane agrees, but then responds with, Sometimes life's a bitch and then you keep living. Yeah. Not exactly the most uplifting ending, but it's the ending this show deserves. It was nice while it lasted. That's gonna do it for us here. Make sure to comment below if you want to expand on anything we left out or might have missed. There's so much more to include, but BoJack is such a difficult show to summarize. If you haven't seen it and you're still watching this video somehow, watch it if only to experience episodes like Fish Out of Water, Free Churro, Ruthie, The View from Halfway Down, Times Arrow. Sorry, I just, I can't overstate just how good this show is. Don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to Channel Frederator for more videos about your favorite movies and TV series. I'm Jacob, and of course, Fred Federator loves you.